and we're live. At least I think so. Hello, everybody. How y'all doing this week? Uh, my name is. Oh. Ooh. My name is. Hi. Slim Shady. No. My name is Dylan, and this is Leslie. This is Music and Mascara. So, for those of you that don't know and you're new to the channel, I'm yep. thinking we should probably explain that a little bit more. Um, we live full time in an RV, this one that we're in right now, and um, work on the road. And we actually do work. We're not totally retired or any of that kind of stuff. So, do work. Uh, our videos usually are helping out with um, practical things that can keep you going in 2020. Doing as much fun stuff as you can, I guess, really. I mean, that's, that's what we're doing. Yeah. So this is our Sunday Night Live. It is every week at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, we do it this late because every fourth, and if there's a fifth Sunday, mm -hmm. Dylan has a class that he teaches. So we just wanted to keep the consistency for each week of this. So it is when the pandemic hit, a little it was like late. A call for I me. think you I have volume like, on somewhere. That was weird. I'm not oh, even looking you know at anything. Oh, is that the... You? I have the same thing. Ha, ha, ha. Yep. <clears throat> anyway. Same thing. Um, so just for consistency's sake, we do them at 930 Eastern each week. This is a place um, for you to ask questions. It is a place where we can answer some questions that we get. And it typically drives the topic of the Sunday Night Live. Yeah. So, so here we are. We're going to go over some questions and stuff. Uh, that came in over the last week or so and then um, we're going to talk what you saw in the thumbnail about uh, cutting the cord because when you move into or when you're looking to be more independent whether that's you know working on the road or whether that's you know trying to work from home because it's 2020 and people are doing that or just trying to get out more um, this whole cutting the cord thing people talk about it and there are challenges with it, like trying to figure out how to be free of all the things you have in a regular house or whatever and routine. Um, there are some things you got to know and some things we've tried and didn't like that you may like. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit. And um, everybody says, hey, where's Fred? <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. So if you haven't Fred. been here before, um, Fred is usually the first one in the comments and it's become kind of a running joke, especially on Thursday because we go from one show right into the next show on Thursdays and typically Fred beats us all there, but I haven't seen him lately. And Fred usually also watches my other channel, Dylan Talks Tone, so I'll check in on him and see how he's doing because he's... Uh... I think he actually, he has some, some health stuff once in a while. He, he told me, so he, he might not have made it. So, um, let's get into some questions from the internet. Sure. Do you have those there? I do. So, the first one was more like a statement and um, just a testimony to this is a common subject we have to talk about all the time. It was um, from last week's live about downsizing so you know we're going to talk about cutting the cord tonight but if you have some um, curiosity about our process from going to a house to an rv we talked about that last sunday i think it was a really good and thorough explanation of what we went through and kind of thought processes and mindset that goes with that um anyway so last week's video the comment was this is from florentine it says i've been having wi-fi issues lately I'm glad yours is working well now. Um, and if you've been following us, it has been different reiterations and trying to nail it down. Um, we will talk about that in a will few we? minutes. Okay. Well, because that's probably one of the biggest yeah. challenges. Yeah, especially for us because we are working. Cutting. Yeah. Yeah. I just, while you're talking, sitting there talking there, I sit back in my chair. I usually lean forward, right? Like mm -hmm. for some reason. I don't know why I do that. And my back's really hurting tonight. So I'm like, I'm going to lean back. And then I had all these visions of like doing like a masterpiece theater spoof on my guitar channel. I'm not game for that. <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So next. <laughs> all right. One second. Let me get this comment. 
down um because as we respond i do try to reply back on the comments as well just so everything is handled so the next um comment that came in was from russ on our video about you switching from a macbook pro to a microsoft surface he said you mentioned the phone your wife uses but didn't say what phone you are using are you still using iphone please share Okay, so the computer journey was um, that I use Apple products 100% from 2006 until about a year ago, or two years, a year and a half ago, and my computers both switched. I built a machine for video, video editing, and it's a PC, and then I sold my MacBook Pro and bought a Microsoft Surface 7 because I didn't need a serious machine for portable because we are portable so um this has been my laptop for just doing basic laptopy things and it's been fantastic and at the same time right around the same time that i built my pc i switched to android phone for the first time in 10 15 years so anyway i oh well 10 years i guess because or 11 years whenever the first iphone came out um i loved it I will tell you that on a weekly basis, I still say I cannot stand my iPhone because I went back to an iPhone. I cannot stand my iPhone and I want an Android again. The problem is there's two things. One is security seems to be an issue, number one. And number two, not that I have to care about that so much, but it just seems like with more and more finances and stuff, another thing we're going to talk about in a few minutes everything going online that I wanted more security and so the iPhone uh, seemed seemed to be at least more secure as well as um, there are certain apps for RVing specifically and we need to do a video um, we talk sometimes once in a while about the apps that we use but we need to do like an app only video like literally like this is what we use these for this is what we use these for this is what we use these for and you know with links to them all and stuff because so people can can understand there's like three or four apps that I use that didn't work on Android um, so and they are like essential to my life being easier so I switched back I do curse it once in a while but I mean I just saw the new MacBook come out I might buy airdrop another. is really cool yeah, though I might buy another Mac I don't know Ooh, maybe that would be huge it would be i don't know i don't care i'm not it's not if that's a good thing i'll buy it and if that's a good yeah. thing i'll buy it and uh if it works for my program and what i'm using right now a pc works better for the software that i like and all right that. well it, so you know. that's what we were talking about the other day though you don't have to be either or obviously he's using a yes. windows product i'm using a mac product we have mac and you know like you can they each have a purpose. We each have them for functionality, and you have a different function than I have, and this is how it works best. Not to get too philosophical. Does that change? In my, Maybe. Like Masterpiece Theater Chair with my new bottle of scotch, uh, Balvenie 12 year. Uh, not to get too philosophical, but it is possible for a person Tequila. to like two things at the same time that seem to be different. So... Hmm. That's true. Like tequila and whiskey, or tequila and scotch. Even though you tequila don't and vodka for me. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Next question. <clears throat> um, next question is about our instant pot video. Okay. Our number one instant pot video. But this is a great question. Um, I am going to assume. So this came in from. It says Mar V. So we're just going to call them Marvy. Um, <laughs> that's what I read. Okay. Um, but their question said, this was so confusing. You manually set it for five minutes and then you say it took 57 minutes. Why did you start with five minutes? I can't understand. Totally fair if you've never used sense, yeah. an Instant Pot. Um, so an Instant Pot for the functionality we use it for primarily is a pressure cooker. So the cook time is after it's pressured up 
and then you can't open it until it's depressurized. So it may only take five minutes to cook. I don't know what I was cooking in that video. Beans? Yeah, I think you're stinky beans, whatever they're called. <laughs> he doesn't like beans. I don't like them. What are they called? Um, black eyed peas? Yeah, black eyed peas. You're cooking um, so yeah, the cook time was probably five minutes because those were from frozen. So they weren't like dried beans. Um, so from frozen are actually like already blanched and ready to cook. And so, but if you cook those in a slow cooker, if you cooked them on the stove, you'd have to cook them a couple of hours. That's how I like them. Um, if you cooked them in a slow cooker, it'd be like an all day process. So instant pot takes five minutes for the cook time. But again, so we were doing that because that was, we were very new in the instant pot game and he was super technical and wanted to time everything. It's probably where the 57 minutes came from, but it does. So from the time you push the start button, it has to pressure up and get to heat. And then it cooks at heat and pressure, which is how it cooks faster. But then once that cooking process is complete, that pressure is naturally released. Um, there is like a quick release process that you can do. Um, I don't do that very it'll often. It'll burn your face off and it'll yes. steam your whole kitchen up. So yeah, do so we normally allow that whole process to do it on its own. But either way, if you've ever cooked stinky beans, beans from frozen even, an hour is remarkable time. It's usually unless like three you, or four hours. Right? Unless you like them hard and crunchy, which I don't. <laughs> it's usually like three or four hours. On the stove, if you did a rapid boil, you could probably do like a couple hours is how I like them. But then you got to babysit them and rapid mm -hmm. boil them for two hours. Yeah. Um, and I just like the hands-off approach. So that was a great question. And it makes yeah. me think, as much as we get those Instapot questions, we need maybe we should do videos. some more videos about it. Yeah. Yeah. Dennis says, <laughs> Dylan, you are certainly consistent with that philosophy. I, I am. About liking more than that one you thing? You like more than one thing. Or yeah. Two things can be true, even though they don't seem like they might go to, like. Thank goodness, because we are so random. Yeah. <laughs> Life would be dumb if there was only one thing that was right. I mean. You know. Well, you'd be very small-minded, too. That's true. Next. That is all that came in via YouTube. There is one more thing I want to talk about that is a great segue into our conversation tonight. Um, I actually saw, I don't know if it was a couple weeks ago. I don't remember when it was exactly. It was on Facebook. Com it was a conversation on Facebook. Um, somebody... That watches this regular. So, Alan, I don't know if he watches these videos. Lost power when he was in the shower. You know, and he's just kind of like, oh, this is how my day started. Like, the power went out when I was in the shower. Yeah, that's, that's probably a crappy start to the day. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I commented like, oh, no. And the, the reply back was, well, you don't have to worry about that anymore. So, just as a quick note, um, because it came to mind today because we're talking about unplugging, right? So, we're going to have this whole conversation about unplugging. But let's say the motorhome's plugged in and we lose power, or when we pull the plug and unplug the motorhome, things don't just work. Like, the generator doesn't auto kick on, like if you had one installed at your house or you had some kind of backup plan. It's not exactly how it works. Um, we do have to like fire it up. So essentially, yes, we could be in the shower mm -hmm. and the power could go out on us. And if it was nighttime, we would be in the dark. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Until we turn the generator on. Newer, there are newer, fancier, expensive coaches that do have like an auto kick on generator thing, but we do not have that. That is a feature that is cool. So let's talk about cutting this cord, the cutting the proverbial cord. Yeah, and I think most people, as soon as you say cutting the cord, I think the most that that statement is used for cable. is cable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's a common, I really feel like it's common now. You, you see people all the time because, you know, cable companies are notorious for like those bundle deals and like you have to have your internet and your cable and everything all wrapped up um, together and then you're stuck like you're right. you're like tied to them literally so then am i too loud 
then people want to cut the cord. My mic has to be like super close. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, um, good. But anyway, so I, when I hear cut the cord, I immediately think cable. I know we're going to make it a bigger conversation tonight, but let's start with cable. Okay, so let's start with TV because that is, well, it is not very super important to us because we don't watch a lot of TV. It is important to a lot of people. Um, and in fact, those that RV, it's important to them too because there are things you can do. Um, we actually cut the cord cable-wise a long time before we moved. Um, we did not have cable television at our house for years. Yeah. Um, Never had it when we bought our house. Uh-uh. We, we don't watch TV in the same set. If you tell me, if you ask me about the latest show that's on television right now, I have no idea. I don't, I don't even I don't, know what they are. I don't know. Like, I mean, ER was a thing. Oh, my gosh. That was a long time ago. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I don't really follow. Now, I will follow sports. I do follow some sports. But I don't. I I will watch football with my friends. I will watch. I'm just not a super. I'm not a fan addict. You know what I mean? Like, I do not. I, lo- I have my teams. I'm a Yankee. I love the Yankees. And I love the Arizona Cardinals, and I love the Detroit Red Wings. Like, I have jerseys, and I do, but I don't follow them. Um, Except for Formula One. I am diehard every practice, every qualifying, every race, every everything about Formula One. I watch everything, Um, and, and most pieces of auto racing. So what we figured out is there's a few different options. So, um... Obviously, you can get a satellite dish, and you can put it on your motorhome, and you can have satellite television, or you can get one of those goofy ones that sits on a little tripod in the front yard with the little dome on it. Those are satellites, too, but they're really not cheap, and we're not, TV, again, is not that important to us, so we don't use them, but they are available, but they are not inexpensive. Um what are some other non-RV? Because this is bigger than just RVing. This is just simplifying in Yeah, general. so if we even just go back to our own story, um, because we haven't had cables, but we have wanted, I think it's mainly come up sports. Um, so we've had, mostly. and football one time, because Bryson loves football. Yeah. Um, and I think we got TV one time for the Super Bowl. Like we are always this like targeted things. Like yes. you, you want to be a part of these mm-hmm. things. But um, so we've had Sling TV before. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's Philo is what Dad has. Yep. So Philo is another one my parents really like. Um, what else have we had? We've had Hulu mm-hmm. um, and Hulu we have Live. Television. We've had YouTube television. Um, so there are so many options out there, and it just depends on what you want it for. Like. Like, my parents like Philo because I don't even know what channel it is that they enjoy watching. So, that was important to them, but it wasn't available, I don't think, on Hulu. Right. Um, So, you have these pockets of channels that each of these providers can offer. So, that's how you can make that deciding factor. Um, But what we found we like is... It's kind of a la carte. Yes, a la carte. Because a lot of... Actually, a lot of the TV services are available that way. Mm -hmm. Even for sports now, with the internet the way it is, and we'll get into that because it's this is all kind of works together. But internet wise, you could just get just hockey or just get football. Mm-hmm. Um, I bought. I am well. We'll talk about what we did first. First, we got Hulu Live, which was amazing. Mm-hmm. Then, when we got the motorhome, we got YouTube TV. So here's the thing about being mobile with television, and I did not know this until I ran into the issue. We are using 4G mobile internet for our house, for our motorhome. The problem is, is that you don't have a home area and it's all location based. So Hulu Live, YouTube Television, Sling Television Live, Mm -hmm. anything with live television because terrestrial television is still too old fashioned and they want you to be in a home area. So, like, for example, YouTube television, all your devices have to log in in your home area once every 90 days. Otherwise, you can't watch it because they don't want you not in a home area. What that has to do with is blackouts. Um, not to get all... I used to be in television. So, it's, it's, it's dumb to me because it's all internet now. Why does that even matter? But, like, for example, 
you can't watch a football game that was aired on your local television for free. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. For 48 hours afterwards. I also think it prevents sharing. It does. So here's what it is. Just we'll get off on this tiny little tangent. And then basically what it is is the FCC made rules. My dad knows all this stuff and taught me. Uh, Many, many years ago, this is really old-fashioned stuff, that basic television channels and basic radio stations had to be free. You Mm -hmm. cannot charge for them. And so what that means is you cannot, they have to be free, but they can put a blackout date of 24 or 48 hours around anything that there has been advertisement bought for. So... For example, the football game has advertisement bought for it. It's free to watch, but that advertisement means that those advertisers have that audience. And if I was to rebroadcast it for, do not broadcast, rebroadcast this without the express permission of blah, 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 it would fall, it would screw up all those commercial rights. So what that means is you have to be in your home area for that to work. Internet has completely made all that irrelevant, but they haven't caught up to that part of it yet. So YouTube, any of these internet-based live television things won't work on a long-term on-the-road solution, except for a satellite. Yes. So it can't be internet-based. Yeah. So um, let's talk about what we're personally using now. And this has changed because we had YouTube TV, and I think we had... Yeah, until it didn't work, but it was good timing mm-hmm. because also you have to pay attention to things that other providers offer you. For instance, um, this came up at work. I don't know if you are into any kind of, just as an example, aside here, um, meditation apps. I think like if you have an American Express card right now, you can get calm for a year. Um, that's like one of their perks. You know, all these things have perks. So our phone plan has a perk. Um, for the plan that we have where we can get basic Hulu, Disney Plus, and ESPN Uh um, is all included. So about the time I found that out, we found out that YouTube TV is not going to work. And I'm like, oh, can't you get what you want on ESPN? And we found out we have like the free ESPN package and we don't really have everything. Um, We, of course, have always had Netflix. Yeah, um, Netflix, Amazon Prime. Yes. Um, so Prime Video is a really good. We have they basic have, Hulu. Yep. Yeah. And then, so then, a la carte, you did the Formula One. Yeah, Formula One was 10 bucks a month. I was yep. paying $65 a month for YouTube TV just Just for Formula One Formula anyway. Formula One. Yeah. And here I am only spending like 70 bucks a season for it now. Yeah. Um, so we did the monthly package though, because the season was shorter by the time we found all this out. So formula one a la carte, then we, um, there was a few documentaries we wanted to see on HBO. We did HBO a la carte, Mm -hmm. um, for a month, um, actually maybe two months, no, a month. And then we canceled it. Um, yeah, that's the thing about a lot of these a la carte (laughs) You're not not committed. You're not committed. So. Um, you know, you could buy them for a couple of months through the winter, binge a bunch, you yeah. know, or whatever you're going to do while you're home, stuck at home, and then just shut them off. And then six months later, you hear yep. about something, just turn it back on and have it for a month, you know, and, and that way you're not $65, $100 a month. Yep. Because all, all those stuff. little packages can't add up. I know Dennis yes. said something like all these um, add-ons to see what they want to see and is worse than cable in a lot of ways. I get that. And that's kind of why yeah. we evaluate every few months. Like, what are we paying for? Are we using it? Um, because HBO, for example, I know we only paid for one month. Um, we thought we were going to squeeze what we wanted to watch in the trial. We didn't, you know, and it automatically bills you. And then I was like, no, I'm just going to cut it off so I don't get billed again. Watch whatever you're going to watch by like December 8th. Um, <laughs> you know, so we still have it until then. Um, yeah. And then we also did the same thing. There was um, a documentary we wanted to see on stars. No idea what stars was. I did the full evaluation. Like, you know, they give you a trial because they want you to try something and get addicted. But I literally watched what I came to watch and there was nothing else that interested me. I like scrolled and scrolled and scrolled and I was like, no, this isn't going to do it. 
and we weren't um I was so excited when Disney Plus came out and then I never watch it and then you just found a, a documentary you know I don't think he realized there was documentaries so he loves the documentaries uh -huh. so we got a documentary on Disney Plus now um so you just have to find what works for you and I've canceled the stars too so I don't get charged for that yeah because for me a lot of it has to do with work I'll sit here with my laptop with a movie going or a documentary going while I'm winding pickups or whatever just in the background just to listen you know to whatever and learn stuff so okay so that's tv so i mean one question before yeah. uh, oh, it's not really a question so dennis made a good point he was saying and we did talk about this certain vpn services can remedy the location problem that you mentioned um but in my mind that's working the system and i don't i don't really want to do that well here's the other yeah she doesn't like that the other thing too is with the VPN thing, it's a thing that you have to stay on top of because you're moving. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's easy if you're going to be somewhere for six months and you do it. But, but when you're moving every week, it, it just it turned into a thing. And we're just like, nah, let's just see what's important to us. And like you say, it is important to take stock of that every once in a while and make sure that your monthly 999s aren't adding up to some crazy amount of money. But simplicity's sake we're like i watch one thing and then we get everything else from prime and netflix netflix is the only thing we actually really pay for everything else is yeah prime is a benefit because we obviously use amazon and, yep. a lot um and prime video is just a um we don't Part buy anything on there we just utilize what the originals that they provide and some of the prime things that are available yep. we don't actually buy like we don't rent shows or rent things a la carte. We might do that with the kids every once in a while, but that's yeah, getting it's less been and less. Long rare. Ago, we yeah. used to go see movies, and we don't do that anymore. Yep. So that's TV. What else are we cutting the cord on? Because everybody thinks of that. Yeah. We want to spend some time on that because everybody's like, what do you do about that? What's, what else? Well, we just let's just jump right into, we just mentioned Amazon. So let's talk about shopping. shopping. Okay. Um, because shopping is a thing and we how do you get stuff yeah how do you get stuff when you're on the road um which we can tie back into mail too if you want um how do you get stuff because obviously we do still order stuff especially because it's a pandemic like we don't want to go shopping so mm -hmm. it's just as easy um it's gotten it's, easy during the week when you're working we may go i mean like there's certain days we're here like sunday nights we're here because we have things to do all day today i know the door wasn't even unlocked today is that weird, <laughs> that is weird. it rained all it day y'all yeah. um but for him not to go outside is huge for me to not go outside is totally normal but for <laughs> you to not go outside is really weird it was raining. um but we do order things because if i know i'm not probably going to go out tomorrow because it's going to be raining we have plans tuesday like we have a meeting tuesday so I could get something to me before I'm going to make it out to go shopping. So it's really easy just to order stuff. Um, so but, how do you order stuff? Yeah. Um, if you're on the road, uh, we found that it's really convenient. They have Amazon lockers. Um, what we found that meant, when you hear the word locker, you think, I mean, only one time you actually used a locker, right? A couple times. A couple? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking like a literal, um, you know, like if like you go locker. to the post office or something and you have something you have to open and get your packages. But most of the time it was actually drug stores. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just went and told somebody and they got your package. Um, so when you order something on Amazon, there is a place you can put your zip code in and it'll find a locker near you. So we just looked near wherever the RV park was and let's say it's a Rite Aid and you go to that Rite Aid and you just show them the little barcode that came in your email that says the package is there and they take the code off of it and they hand it to you or you go you do go to this thing that looks like a bus locker and you have a six digit code and it's got a touch screen and you punch the digits into the touch screen and the door like automatically opens by itself and you take your box um the only downside to this is that if it's a third party seller on Amazon, it doesn't work. It mm -hmm. has to be a item that is bought, sold, and shipped by Amazon. Um, which, 
many, 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 many things are. I only ran into a couple of things in the, you know, five and a half months or whatever we were on the road this time that, that did not work. Yeah. Most everything was, when it says shipped and fulfilled, fulfilled and shipped by Amazon, that means it it will work. Yeah. And typically if, if you're a prime member and you just filter things by prime, that usually eliminates any of that third party stuff too, because if it's coming prime, it's typically coming from an Amazon warehouse. Cause that's the only way they can guarantee yep. it. And you can avoid seeing some of those products, um, that aren't eligible. Um, another thing we ran into only once, and I think it was in the very beginning of this process is, um, there was, we were limited by the, it was a very small, like a small town pharmacy. They had very limited hours. Um, so you are limited to the time that you can pick up your packages based on right. when the business is open. So things to be mindful of, like we could have got a package in the city we were in, but the place closed before we could have got it. So we had to wait until we were in the next place. Mm -hmm. You know, like we had to make those decisions and be smart about. And look at your delivery yeah. dates. Because you might, if you're only staying somewhere for a week and it says Wednesday and it doesn't come till Thursday or Saturday and you already left. I mean, so you got to, yeah. you do have to kind of stay on top of that. If for things that you want to order that do not, are not Amazon and are not that easy. Um, well, first of all, Target and Walmart, they all have ship to store stuff. Lowe's and all that, they all have ship to store stuff. So you can just order stuff ship it to their store you just drive by and pick it up um i have a lot of packages that come for work because we have parts of guitars and pickup parts and all that kind of stuff so what i do is you can go to ups and you can ups ups store or whatever and you can find the nearest ups store to you and you just have whatever you're ordering shipped to the store and the store charges like i don't know it's like i paid two dollars one time i've paid as much as five dollars yeah i think they're independently owned so they get to yeah. set those prices but two to five bucks somewhere in there for them to accept your package for you and then you just track it with ups like normal and when it's delivered it's delivered and you just go over there and give them your name mm -hmm. and you know id and stuff and they give you your package and that, so that could be anything, as long as UP, it's UPS. I think FedEx will do it too, but UPS store was easy because it seems like every town has at least one UPS store location that we were in. It was a really easy thing to do. Yep. No, that's cool. Yep. Um, and so in the rest of our mail. And the rest of our mail is the next topic. Yeah. So um, just to, to back up mail? on mail... Um, Obviously, you have to have an address to get mail. Um, some people get P.O. boxes. You can't get packages at a P.O. box. So if you ever, you know, then you have to decide what to do with that. Um, but we have a physical location that we are using as our home address, which is where we get our mail, how we pay our taxes, how we get our registration done um, yeah, on our vehicles. So this is all... Um, because if anybody's watching this it, from the RV world, there's a lot of like, where'd you pick your address? And there, there's like this whole domicile process and it just wasn't something we wanted to do. So we. Yeah. So to drill into that a little bit more. So um, you're, everyone has a domicile. It's your home address. Yes. And the thing is, is that every state uh, obviously, different states have different benefits. Montana doesn't, tax rates. Montana yeah. doesn't have any sales tax. Um, other states don't have income tax, like Florida. Mm -hmm. um, and so you could technically become a resident in whatever state suits your situation and then have your mail sent there. Um, and but, there are mailing services available. Yes. In those, typically it's South Dakota, Texas, Montana, and Florida. Usually those are the big ones. Um, 
that everybody uses because there's different tax benefits. And Montana, stuff. you're saying because there's a car benefit. Yeah, That's well, not yeah, you normally an RV benefit. Yeah, because you can buy a motorhome for 500000 bucks and not pay sales tax on it. Right, but I don't... But yeah. here's where I was about to say. We are not lawyers and this is not actual legal advice. However, what I will tell you is you need to do your research on what it means to legally be... Legally be a resident in a particular state mm -hmm. because there are people that are actually using various loopholes in various states like Florida for the income tax thing and Montana for purchasing the, mm -hmm. for the sales tax thing and running into trouble with financing a motorhome because they tried to do it in Montana to get around the taxes or insuring a motorhome or various other situations like that so i'm not going to give you suggestions on what to do or what not to do on any of that just make sure that you do your research because you definitely don't want to get caught out on a tax thing <laughs> yeah you know so just and so for that reason we and so the, the the next best thing to do would be do you have a relative or somebody that can take your mail for you um so while we were gone, we were gone for like five months and we envisioned that we were going to have to have like mail sent to us like every two weeks and it was going to be this process, right? Um, and we actually only had our mail sent to us twice. Um, yeah, in five and a half months. The whole time we were gone. Yeah. Um, we There is a service that the post Postal Service provides where you can get an email of what's coming in the mail. So the whole time, every day the mail came, I knew what was coming, what came. So then I would know if there was something important. And then you realize as you're watching this email and wondering, do I want to have my stuff forwarded to me that none of this stuff is really important. It's like informational or it could wait. Um, and then we were controlling where the packages went. Um, so go digital, get stuff in yeah. your email, pay your bills online, and you don't have to worry about yeah. a lot of that stuff. So we can talk about, because we're going to talk about banking here in a minute. Yep. One of one of the pieces, I have one company that pays me with a paper check. Yeah, but luckily like, it's not okay. like a huge piece of income, so a lot of times right. we can yeah. wait on that too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not that much. and It's, it's um, like a bonus check when we get it. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's like the only thing that sometimes I'm like you know and then every once in a while like what could happen like it comes up on like new credit card season and like your, all your credit cards are expiring and they're going to send you new ones like maybe you might have to have that sent so you you're not without a card or whatever but every once in a while so you'll have that but most of by doing all of our stuff online by doing all of our banking online which we'll get to in a minute everything we've digitized it where we got home we even went through the mail that had piled up and there was my four pieces of mail that were worth anything. Everything else was junk. So we don't get that much mail besides packages. Mm -hmm. And we just told you how we handled that. Um, so let's talk about some of the other, we're talking about cord cutting still, obviously some of the more, the other important things in life that people have a hard time envisioning how to handle, I guess. Um, Money is a, is yeah. a big one. So this has some to do, not everything to do with this lifestyle we live now. We actually, I did it before he did. Um, we totally went. I, I've never been in a physical location of my bank. I think there might be two in New York or something. I chose an online bank because I was tired of paying fees on my own money and that's probably about it <laughs> <laughs> I was tired of paying to have my money like I get what the process is but if you understand how the banking world works and you can't get money transferred for three days and various things and they're floating your money and making money on your money anyway so why am I paying to use my money just a sad rant there but um <laughs> so I went totally online I had, you know, you get, I work mobile. I work from home. There's no, everything's direct deposit. I had a business at the time when I even did this, um, but my business was online. Everything is 
you know, I don't know where this money is. Like, it's somewhere out there, right? Everything was digital. So, again, I was kind of frustrated with the bank I was using. Went totally online. Did research. Wanted um, higher interest rates. So, now I make interest. Not only am I not paying to use my money, I make money on my money, even in my checking account. Um, and that was just really important to me. Um, so online all digital, banking. we did it way before we even sold our house. Um, Dylan I still didn't. had a local bank. I did because yeah. I, I did at the time I was doing a lot of, um, local business. I was doing a lot of like guitar. Well, when we had our house before I was actually doing a lot of repairs and stuff. So I was soldering output jacks and working on gross guitars and ugh. Anyways, I was working on a lot of guitars and doing a lot of local business, which meant I had a lot more checks and I had a lot more cash and I had to ha have some way to put that in the bank. So, um, but then when we went mobile and started, or when we started to realize that we were going to do this, one of the moves I made was, first of all, I stopped doing local business because I realized that I was running my brains out all over the place for not a lot of money, number one, and number two, um... So that time could be spent in more profitable things. And number two, um, when you're in a motorhome, you can't do local stuff. So it's, we, that was one of the, over the last five years, shaped the business in a little bit different direction. And now I don't even take cash. Um, I just won't. You can Venmo me. You can. Yeah. There are just those, so many so, options out no there. To even and I think the final straw for us, COVID. we were actually doing, um, we were trying to, again, we were like simplifying and trying to get all the business stuff. And we went to this bank he was using, a local bank. It was actually a local credit union. And like, okay, let's talk about some options here for business. For business. Mm -hmm. And. They heard online, online and uh, they just kind of flipped out and <laughs> they, they were like, we words. can't help you. And we were like, what do you mean you can't help us? Like, there's money coming in. We need it handled. Like, isn't that what a bank does? And they just were like, no. And it was it was kind of like the final straw of like, what are we doing with this? And they're not serving us. The old lady with coupons and checkbook in front of you in the grocery store that lady is who that bank caters, caters to. to yeah which like, is great like they need if that. you i mean i know We're lots of people deep. that go to the bank every week and they get cash out and they move their money around in person with a bank teller and that's how they like to do their banking and that is great if i never have to talk to anybody and i can put my money where i need it and i can use it how i need to use it that's what i want yep and the only problem is every once in a while you do have cash. Yeah. So you found a thing. Yeah. So that has been an ongoing challenge. Like what happens if... Um, it came up last week because I sold a guitar and the guy paid in cash. Yeah. And, I, and it was one of those things I forgot to tell him. Can you just Venmo me the money or whatever? And I forg And he's even a friend of mine. I could have done that. I forgot to tell him and he showed up with cash. Yeah, which is great. Like, everybody loves cash, but then what do you do? So just thinking about it from the perspective of if you are in a position where you have cash or you receive cash, you know, for work or whatever you do, is an online bank going to work for you? First answer is no, because they don't have, they have ATM. You can get cash all day long. From your account, there's ATM and all these partnerships, but there's nowhere to deposit money, um, which would definitely be problematic if you were getting cash all the time. Um, so, one of the more popular, um, as I've seen a lot of stuff about it, but they advertise it. I don't, I want to laugh and say for a younger crowd because of the way they advertise, I think, and it's like, um, you get your deposits, any direct deposit you get two days before a regular bank. And um, it, it just seems like it's, it's gimmicky sounding to me. Um, but as I was researching, like, how do people deposit cash when they have an online bank? This 
this company kept coming up. So I was like, all right, let's dig into it a little bit more. And I already have an online bank and I don't need an online bank. So then that feels weird because we were laughing, like, do we just need to open a bank account for these instances? But what if we were across the country? There's, there's not a good family of banks that is everywhere in the country. No. So that still wouldn't make sense. Except and for Wells Fargo and they'll never get a dime of my money ever. And, and that would, we had a mortgage with them. He can't say that. Um, anyway. Again, ever again. <laughs> can't control who your mortgage gets sold to. Anyway, what's the name anyway, of the company? Um, so I found out it's called Chime. So Chime is an online bank. Seemingly like what we have. They don't have like interest. Like I'm not going to make interest on any money in my checking account with them. It's a basic checking But they account. do have, yeah. you know, the perks of like no no fees um they have like overdraft protection and the things you would expect and it they send you a debit card um but what i found out about this company because you're still like okay it's an online bank how do you deposit they are a part of the green dot network which is you know you can buy those debit cards and you can do money transfers and things like that um walmart comes to mind i know they use green dot um, but they are a part of the Green Dot family. So as I'm looking at that network, that means we could have somebody hand us cash and go to the Dollar General, which where we're at, there's one like every 50 feet or something and say, I want to put this money on my card. And it's literally like a reverse transaction, like put in your debit card, hand the person the cash, and they like credit it to your bank account and it's available for you within two hours. That's cool. Perfect. And I think the fees can vary. I think the max is like four ninety five. For a thousand bucks. Up to a thousand dollars. Up to a thousand dollars a day or three times a day and 10,000 a month or something. Yeah, it was ridiculous. It's like three deposits a day up to a thousand dollars. Oh, okay. Max. And then $10,000 a month. Yeah. Max. I mean, I want to have that problem. I want to be depositing 10,000 cash every, every month. That'd be awesome. Um, anyway, so that was an easy solution because green dot includes like dollar tree, dollar general, Walmart, I think, Walgreens, I don't know. I'm, There's a I'm whole probably network. mistaken, but they have like 95,000 locations it's across the country, Just, and we'd be able to yeah. find it. Um, so, and, and, so we didn't mention the company we use, but I'm going to have to now. Um, Capital One 360 is who we bank with, and Chime also has a list of banks that they work well with so that you can seemingly transfer without those holds and delays and they are partners. So that was another benefit. So now I can go deposit cash if I need to pay a small fee within two hours. And I'm sure that's based on any, how all banks deposit. Like mm -hmm. if their money's in the account to cover it, you're probably good to go yeah. right then. But anyway, so let's just say it takes two hours, but then I can transfer it to my bank account that I actually bank from yeah. seamlessly. Yeah. So that just sounded like the best solution. You know, we're, we could have, we have family and friends here. We could have had somebody do it for us. And, right, it's a check but what if we yeah. weren't here? Like we're trying to think like, how do we make this sustainable for any situation we might find ourselves in? And this just seemed like, the best, um, the best option. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, what about health insurance is the other one everybody always asks Oh, about. so health insurance, that's a great question. Um, because everybody thinks of that as a location thing, and then I think they also think of what do you do? But we started this conversation, I do work full time, like, for a company, I work full time. I have a full time job, full benefits. Um, so we are covered. We have health insurance, and we just said we have a home address. So of course that's that's our address for all the paperwork. But um, health insurance typically works. There's just in network and out of network, and you can it's I can pull church. up I can pull up the app on my phone say what city I'm close to and find whatever kind of doctor I need to and find out if they're in or out of network. 
um, and make my decisions in that way. So super simple from our perspective on how to get that care. Yours yep. is a little different. Mine's Did you? a little different. And then um, one of the things I have available to me is I'm actually Native American. And so um, Indian Health Services has a network of stuff all over the country. Um, and it's never close to anybody. Like right now I'd have to drive like three and a half hours to get there. Um, but so there's, there's, there's ways and it's, um, the, and the thing about the whole location part of it is we do have a home base. Like this is where we are right now. So if there was some, you know, yearly or semi-annually or anything that, you know, the normal stuff that you wanted to do and have a, a doctor and have, you know, then we just go back if we need that right but we don't but we don't really that often so this is for for us personally this is not as big of an issue but for some people i can see it would be so what you would have to do is just schedule it better and i've seen other rvers that go to the doctor more often um who they may have through the year their appointments that they need to be at scheduled mm -hmm. um strategically so yeah and i think that just comes out. into your planning like yeah. we have some some plans where and we have to be specific places this spring similar to this summer this past summer like yep. we had places we needed to be and we made plans to fit that into the plan if if that was the doctor's appointment or something it would work the same way for us um yep. and maybe we just wouldn't venture as far to make sure we could um be where we needed to be on time um the other thing that we talked about was phone and internet. Yeah. So we have Verizon cell phones. That's pretty easy. Um, the internet, we have a company called Fire Wi-Fi. It's firewifi.org, I believe. If you call them, make sure that you tell them that you, we sent you. Um, I don't get anything for it. But still do it because they're awesome um yeah because we've had a lot of conversations with them and yeah. um talking through we some of the challenges we thought we were having and working we, things out what it is is they are growing because everybody's growing and i had a couple of problems um one of their service providers made some changes and kind of like didn't tell them and then they had some problems and it filtered down to the customers and the owner of the company called me because he knew i was a little annoyed with this he called me and helped me work the whole thing out, the owner of the company. It was awesome. And um, I didn't tell him. This was even, like, before I told him I had a YouTube channel, any of that kind of stuff. Like, he didn't know any of that. And he was really trying to help me out. Um, and as a result of that, not as a result of it, but at the same time as that was happening, they've even come out with more plans um, to serve more people. Um, they can't tell you what they are but like for example we're on a blue plan and there are pink plans so obviously i will say it some of them are t-mobile and some of them are at&t the cool part about having an at&t plan so we have at&t cellular internet through a third-party seller it is not throttled until ours isn't now throttled until 400 gigs a month um we also have a couple of hot spots with verizon it's helpful to have two colors, two brands. Whatever you choose. Whatever you choose, it doesn't matter, but it's helpful to understand where you're going and what the majority of them is. And so for most people, it's gonna be AT&T and Verizon. So it's kind of cool to have an, a 4G internet service that is based on an AT&T plan, whether that's just a hotspot. It depends on your usage, how much you're using it. Um, just maybe an AT&T hotspot and a Verizon hotspot because some places will have one that's really good and some places will have both mm -hmm. that's really good and some places will have the other that's really good. So at least you're getting by either yeah. way. And then just understanding how much you use per month yes. and making the decision on that. Our example is a little extreme. Keep Correct. in mind we are working, um, but even if you're going out recreationally, I would not bank on any park Wi-Fi because it is not very good. Um, actually, where we're at is pretty stinking good, but yeah. we are paying for a different level of service. Yeah, I think um, we're paying $20 a month for internet here. 
by oh. choice because we were kind of in we a pickle when we got up. here and yeah. we like backups yeah for twenty dollars a month and he's been great at being responsive and like I was like 20 bucks yeah I'll give you 20 bucks let's do it yeah so yeah that's internet and phone um, again we, we have a whole video about it and actually in a couple of weeks um, I'm gonna do another video about it because we actually I actually it's getting better like I'm learning stuff about how to manage 4g Wi, how to manage 4g internet and how to I mean, if you've noticed tonight, we've not had any streaming problems. We had streaming problems for like three weeks. I figured out the problem. And fixed it. And I it. fixed it. And I didn't even have to buy anything. And so I'm figuring it out. So we're going to do another video about internet because it keeps, it's awesome. It keeps getting better. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I mean, we hope that it doesn't keep evolving, but we do, no matter what it means, we do like learning in the process, even if it feels a little painful sometimes. Um, learning is always good and it always gets better and I did get a message from a customer the other day who is involved with Elon Musk's satellite internet hmm. and he said that that's gonna be four hundred and fifty dollars they're doing a beta program right now four hundred and fifty dollars for the equipment a hundred bucks a month for a hundred up or 100 down and 20 up which isn't really fast but it's pretty fast it's it's as fast or a little faster maybe than a cell phone than than 4g yeah and what that's supposed to be is super consistent because a satellite it's satellite a different right. kind of satellite though correct lower orbit yeah yeah um blah 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 anyway so satellite might actually be an option very soon, soon. yeah um that could be because 450 bucks sounds like a lot but my weeboost costs 450 bucks so mobile internet stuff kind of is expensive 450 bucks sounds amazing to me like if i could buy that equipment and have that speed and not have to worry about where we were or ever in the middle of nowhere or i mean maybe that know. means we'd have internet in national parks i swear they put like a dome over those things right it's like a force field. Of yes. Cell phone. You like service. drive in and your phone goes. Nope, <laughs> no service. Not working. <laughs> so anyway, is that the last thing? Um, yeah, I feel like you said something else and I forgot, or maybe it came oh, up yeah. and I hadn't written. Oh, the health insurance I did not write down, so you covered that. Okay. Um, is there anything else you can think of while we're? Yeah, we're trying that, to think like, of like popular questions, like how do you handle stuff? this? and unhooking yeah. from regular life what that means and I think we covered most of the basics and what's really interesting about it is is most of them aren't that hard no let's talk while you while you think on that and tell us um, so I want to remind you that we are on patreon music and mascara um, and we just released yesterday the pre-release that video will be out this week but it's a pre-release really good um rocky mountain national park so if you want to see and we released a video today about where we're at now and what we're doing so if you want to see uncut videos real time where we're at pictures of what we're doing including we integrated a video this time into our share we usually do like picture time we added a video this time super cool um, and then those pre-release videos, um, you can get all of that on Patreon. It's also an exclusive community. Chat with us, ask questions, um, guaranteed to get your questions probably answered there and brought up in our live Q&A. And I put your name.